Almost 12 hours ago at the time of my recording this, Ken Calamity got banned in the OCG and I find this immensely frustrating so I'm going to talk about it. I know I already have a video complaining about Crimson Dragon but we're going to be doing that again today. So when we look at Agrapain, Agrapain has the ability to summon any dragon monster from the extra deck to an extra monster zone or main monster zone that you can summon to that two or more link monsters are pointing to, right? So if you're going to be using Agrapain, you oftentimes need a minimum of five extra deck slots. Well, why do I say five? You want a link one or link two that points diagonally downward to the left and or right uh, zones. And the reason for this is so you can summon either your LP or your Pisty, whichever one is more relevant, to that zone. And then you'd have the capability of summoning your Agarpain above in the EMZ. Now, because your Agarpain and LP or your Agarpain and Pisty are pointing to the same zone, you'd have the capability of going into something, whatever really, as long as it doesn't have a uh, summoning condition that says must be synchro, fusion, Exceed summon or so on or must first be you know, synchro fusion exceed summon so on So you end up needing one link monster to precede the summoning of Agarpain Right, you need Agarpain and at least LP sometimes Pisty And then you need the card that you actually want to summon right so you are taking up four to five of your extra deck slots to utilize Agar pain appropriately. Crimson Dragon doesn't have this issue. Crimson Dragon plus one other 12 can potentially work. Reason being, when you summon Crimson Dragon, you get to search out a spell or trap that mentions Crimson Dragon, and one such spell is the Field Synchro World. As you continue to Synchro Summon, or as any player Synchro Summons really, it gains counters, and you have the capability to use those counters to level modulate. So it's entirely possible if you're running a Synchro-focused strategy, like the Synchro Bestial, Synchro Horus, Horus Bestial, you have the capability to very easily summon like a Baron de Fleur, level modulate it to 12, hard summon a Crimson Dragon, and whatever else it is that you want, and then on the opponent's turn, you have the ability to target the Baron de Fleur, with your Crimson Dragon tagging out into a King Calamity, a uh, Cosmic Blazar, or a Supernova. And a really important thing is, although Crimson Dragon only goes into Dragon Synchros, uh, this card, I think, is much stronger than Agarpain ends up being, because it also treats those cards as being properly Synchro Summoned. Part of the reason that King Calamity is even functional <laughs> is because of this effect. King Calamity can only do the lockout effect if it's appropriately synchro summoned. And something to bear in mind is King Calamity is not the easiest thing to summon on the opponent's turn under normal circumstances, even though we have access to things like synchro tuners. Part of this is due to the fact that King Calamity needs to be the last thing to resolve. Or, there's a better way for me to put this. Basically, whatever summons King Calamity cannot be chain linked to. Because if it's chain link two or higher, King Calamity when summoned will miss its opportunity to activate its lockout effect. It's one of the reasons why if you're playing against Centurion and you know it's your turn, you have turn player priority, shotgunning and infinite impermanence, or something like a droplet or a forbidden chalice, right? is the way to go because that'll be chain link one then your opponent will be forced to use their crimson dragon effect there but then they'll just go into cosmic blazar so it's like you're dealing with an option select that you shouldn't really have to so something out of the combination of those three cards needs to get hit but you're still dealing with a bit of an option select now because the only real change is if they get rid of king calamity then they're just going to establish the Cosmic Blazar or the Supernova as the situation demands. And some of the people I've spoken to recently have insisted that Crimson Dragon isn't worth banning, that Konami is not going to hit it, so on and so forth. And I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not Konami, obviously, and I'm not really going to argue from that standpoint. 
as with the Anubisman video the other day, I'm arguing from the angle of, is this card the thing that's actually a problem? And I think it is, because again, you ban King Calamity, and yet you still have to deal with this thing, cheating out cards that a deck might not have the capability to summon normally, right? Like, this is the thing that I think ends up being really problematic. Like, Helk gave access to synchro tuners of various levels in decks that could not actually summon them. And while this did make for some creative deck building, it led to like really absurd scythe locks. And overall, Helk of Ibrax ended up being a very unhealthy card for the game at large. Crimson Dragon is the same thing in a different capacity. And yet the argument is this card isn't ban worthy. I don't get it. This card genuinely frustrates me so much because King Calamity is something that was, you know, like is, at least for the TCG side of things, being run into the uh, Red Dragon Archfiend deck. And while, yes, you could use something like Burning Soul to make this card on the opponent's turn, more often than not, it's going to be a card that you summon on your own turn to close out games. I think that's clearly how this card was designed and intended to be used. And if it gets used in a different capacity on occasion, I think that's okay as long as it's not a consistent thing that's going on. But unfortunately, because Crimson Dragon exists, people are going to build around shotgunning into that card in any opportunity that they are capable of doing so. And so people are more and more frustrated with that card, even though this is actually the prime offender. Again, why is Crimson Dragon able to cheat out Supernova when Supernova has a summoning condition that genuinely makes it hard to play it outside of its intended deck without a massive resource investment? Why is it that this thing is cheating out Cosmic Blazar? How is it, you know, it's okay to cheat out Cosmic Blazar, but... Cosmic Quasar, which has a very similar effect to Crimson Dragon, has a much steeper cost, a much more understandable cost, for doing effectively the same thing this does. And the crazy thing is, Cosmic Quasar actually can't summon Supernova, because Supernova's summoning condition, or summoning requirements rather, don't match up with what Cosmic Quasar asks for. And if... You're maybe curious why exactly I'm so wound up about an OCG list when I don't necessarily play in the OCG format. It's because I'm genuinely concerned that this decision is going to be reflected in the TCG and the Crimson Dragon isn't going to get hit, even though it's clearly the offending party. Now, the TCG has done better with hits in recent years, and that's part of the reason why like this is so frustrating to me. Because literally last year... Sprite Elf was out for, I think, six months. And then it got banned. It got banned in February of this year. Now, Sprite Elf is on some level kind of comparable to Hulk. It's not exactly the same. And it had a wide range of application. It's a card that I think is, you know, a little interesting, a bit cool. But I also completely understand why it got banned. I talked to someone about this earlier and I said that what elf does mechanically is less offensive than what crimson dragon does. And she said she wasn't sure what I meant by that. So when you look at elf, elf simply enables things. It's not like necessarily cheating things out. It has a capability to revive things and give you extra extension and it gives you a crazy amount of protection, right? It largely enables pathing and extra grind game stuff but it's not bypassing anything right like elf i think if maybe it didn't have the protection effect or maybe the protection was a slightly different kind of protection would be a more permissible card but i feel like no matter what you do crimson dragon is going to be absurd as long as it has that last line of text well not the last one but it has that this is treated as a synchro summon portion of the text because that changes so much 
that determines what this card can potentially summon. That determines which cards are really good to use off of this, right? And it also makes it so anything that you summon off of this is easily revivable. This card to me is really, really egregious, not only because the investment to use it is relatively low, but it bypasses a lot of restrictions that were put in place as balancing factors for cards. So it, it's also doubly frustrating to me when I am constantly faced with the notion that, oh, you know, this card is fine and and something like King Calamity or potentially Cosmic Blazar or potentially Supernova is the problem when normally you wouldn't even really see Cosmic Blazar all that often and the only deck aside from, you know, Crimson Dragon decks that are summoning Supernova are legitimately the Red Dragon Archfiend decks that it was, you know, designed for in the first place. Synchron can summon it, and maybe occasionally you'll see somebody do it, right? But in those cases, it's you know likely off of a speeder play. So it kind of makes sense that they can do it. And you can even argue that speeder maybe should be banned because of what it does. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I, I, am, I am genuinely so tired of this card. And to be clear, I do appreciate the flavor in its design. I still don't think it ever should have been printed. 